Hello, my name is Jacinta and I'm a speech and language therapist. And today I'm going to talk about the role of speech and language therapy in pulmonary rehabilitation. Speech and language therapists assess, diagnose and treat swallowing, voice and communication disorders. Speech and language therapists play an important role in the management of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, as swallowing, reflux, changes to voice and speech and oral hygiene issues are very common in COPD. Speech and language therapists as part of the multidisciplinary team can help people with COPD to eat, drink and communicate to the best of their ability. Speech and language therapists play an important part in the early detection and management of reflux, dry mouth, known as xerostomia, swallowing and voice disorders including a condition called upper airway dysfunction. Early identification of these difficulties can lead to less exacerbations of COPD, which might lead to fewer doctor visits, less need for antibiotics or other treatments or even hospital admissions. At the end of this session, you will have a better understanding of the links between chronic respiratory disease and difficulties across swallowing, voice, speech and oral health. You will have a greater understanding of the relationship between breathing and swallowing, the mechanism of aspiration and swallowing problems in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You will be able to identify the signs and symptoms of swallowing, voice, and dry mouth and be aware of swallowing safety advice, the importance of maximising respiratory function to maintain safe swallowing and you will know the important role of oral hygiene for swallowing and voice. Swallowing. Input from a speech and language therapist as part of the multidisciplinary team in your pulmonary rehab will help you to reach your potential for eating and drinking safely to optimise physical and social functioning. Swallowing difficulties are very common in COPD. This is because it may be difficult to coordinate the breathing and swallowing. Research says that up to 55% of people in a pulmonary rehabilitation group had proven swallowing difficulties and this affected their quality of life. We know that undiagnosed but clinically significant dysphagia is present in patients undergoing pulmonary rehab. We identify that when we are swallowing, we should not be breathing. And when we are breathing, we should not be swallowing. During breathing, the airway or windpipe is open and the tube to the stomach is closed. During swallowing, the airway is closed and the tube to the stomach the esophagus is open. It takes a finely coordinated movement of lots of muscles to achieve this. As people with COPD have breathing difficulties, they may also have trouble with this timing and coordination. The airway closing during swallowing is called an apneic period. During a whole meal, there are hundreds of these apneic periods. Sometimes when people have lung disease, this causes an increase in shortness of breath and fatigue. If you have ever felt tired while eating or drinking, or maybe you haven't been able to finish an entire meal, this may be because it is difficult to tolerate all of these apneic periods. We know this is challenging to control. This fatigue may result in poor timing between breathing and swallowing. Food or liquid may enter into the windpipe, which may cause you to cough, or it may happen in a silent manner. This is called aspiration. This can lead to aspiration pneumonia, for which hospital admission for treatment will be required. Reflux. You may have heard of the term reflux, this is the feeling of food or fluids as material coming up from the stomach. This can enter your airway, cause a burning sensation in your throat, and it can irritate the airway, causing coughing and possibly lead to a chest infection. Respiratory diseases like COPD have been linked to an increased risk of reflux. 
We also know that people with COPD may not feel food or fluid or acid reflux in the throat. Reflux may also be part of the cause of any changes you have noticed in your voice. Today we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms and risks associated with swallowing difficulties or dysphagia and how we can better manage and even prevent the chest infections and exacerbations of COPD associated with swallowing difficulties and reflux. Signs that you may have respiratory dysphagia. Have you ever noticed increased shortness of breath while eating or drinking? Difficulty chewing and avoiding some foods such as crunchy, dry or chewy foods? A gurgly voice during or after swallowing? Taking much longer to finish a meal? Sensation of food sticking in your throat. Increased work of breathing and increased tiredness during eating and drinking. A feeling of being full up even though you have only eaten a very small amount. The presence of acid indigestion or reflux. Coughing, chestiness during or just after eating and drinking. Difficulty swallowing tablets. Now for some tips and advice on how we can manage and improve the coordination between breathing and swallowing for eating and drinking. Before eating and drinking, make sure that your mouth is clean and moist by regularly brushing your teeth and gums and clean your dentures to reduce bacteria buildup in your mouth. Speak to your nurse, GP or speech and language therapist if you need saliva replacement products. It is very important that you sit fully upright. If you need assistance achieving this, please ask someone to help you. If you have secretions or mucus stuck in your throat or the back of your mouth, try to clear these first before eating and drinking. Speak to a nurse if you require assistance clearing your secretions. If you wear dentures, make sure these fit well and are comfortable. If they are loose or ill-fitting, they may cause more of a problem. Ensure you have easy access to all of your cutlery and food. It would be helpful to have a relaxed and comfortable environment during mealtimes and turn off any distracting music or TV and avoid talking whilst eating and drinking. Try to relax your whole body as much as possible. Make sure you are well rested before eating and drinking. Be aware that food preparation may be tiring. If you are extremely breathless, please seek medical advice from a medical practitioner as eating and drinking may become very difficult. This may be applicable only to some of you, but if you are on oxygen, change your oxygen mask to a nasal cannula whilst you are eating and drinking if possible. If you use a face mask, it may be helpful for someone to assist you at mealtimes. Now, for some tips during and after eating and drinking. Do not use spouts or straws unless they have been specifically recommended by a speech and language therapist. Eat slowly and take smaller amounts. It may help to take softer foods which require less chewing. Try not to take food and drink in your mouth at the same time. This is harder to manage as your swallow has to deal with two consistencies at the same time. If your mouth is feeling dry, take a sip of fluid when you need to, but be aware that alternating drinks with mouthfuls of food may be difficult. You may benefit from doing an extra swallow to clear any food left behind in your mouth. Avoid continuous drinking Ensure you take one sip at a time. Attempt to breathe out immediately after you swallow. You may find eating little and often easier. Select high calorie options if you are struggling to eat enough. 
If you are concerned about your nutrition, you can ask the nurse or consult your dietitian. Remain upright for at least 30 minutes after a meal. Remember, keep your mouth clean and moist. Rinse your mouth after medications and inhalers. And make sure your mouth is clear of all food after meals. As swallowing and respiration involve the same muscles and nerves, weakness in one may lead to a weakness in the other. People with COPD may not be aware that they have a swallowing problem. Some research queries if this is because your condition means that you cough frequently. It can be hard to tell if this is linked to a swallowing problem or the COPD. However, if you notice any of the signs or symptoms we mentioned above, ask for a referral to your speech and language therapy department, and this can be explored further. Voice and speech. COPD can affect your voice and speech. This may be due to the changes in your breathing and the effect of medication or treatments that you are on. Over time, this may lead to changes in your vocal cords and larynx, where your voice comes from. You may notice a change in how your voice sounds. This may be roughness, hoarseness, breathiness or loudness. We know dyspnea or shortness of breath can affect our ability to talk during social activities and our ability to endure conversation. Our ability to raise our voice, to speak in a group, to speak in a noisy environment, to sing or perform. These voice problems, known as dysphonia, can vary between individuals depending on your overall health, prescribed medications and severity of COPD. Our oral health or mouth problems can also impact on both voice and swallowing. The good news is that for the most part, the dysphonia or voice problems, whether it is hoarseness or dyspneic speech, can be treated and greatly improved with the appropriate voice therapy with your speech and language therapist. It is always important to warm up your voice in the morning. If you see, if you use morning nebulizers, Please use these first before doing any vocal warm-up exercises. Please avoid hard glottal attack or throat clearing before your nebulizer. Coughing and throat clearing in the morning may damage your vocal cords. It is best to allow the nebulizer to soften the mucus in the throat or to sip on warm water to loosen material in the throat before coughing it up and prior to using your voice. Other tips which can help you to maintain good vocal function include minimizing your caffeine and alcohol intake, avoid medicated throat lozenges, avoid smoking and avoid smoky atmospheres, avoid very hot, very cold and spicy foods, Avoid speaking in loud and noisy environments as this may strain your voice. Try to rest your voice for short intermittent periods throughout the day. In order to optimize your vocal function, we encourage you to maintain good oral hygiene, to drink water frequently throughout the day, attempt to consciously breathe through your nose and control your reflux symptoms in conjunction with your general practitioner. If you experience prolonged and significant changes in your voice beyond a two week period that do not resolve, a referral should be sought via your GP for an ear, nose and throat consultant, especially if you experience any of these following symptoms. If you notice any changes in your neck the back of your throat, pain with or without using your voice, pain on swallowing, new persistent hoarseness or a feeling of a lump in your throat. In summary, we know that dysphagia education and management 
and management of voice disorders can contribute to early identification, patient awareness and self-management of dysphagia, voice and dry mouth symptoms. Early identification of dysphagia symptoms leads to reduced exacerbations and improved quality of life. We can identify that the burden of dysphagia and the physical and social barriers that are caused by voice and swallowing difficulties and the challenges of managing food selection and diet options as a result of COPD. As speech and language therapists, our aim is to optimise your quality of life, to help people make informed choices and to live well with your COPD. We advise to inform your GP of any difficulties you may have with swallowing, voice, speech or dry mouth and request a referral to your speech and language therapy service in your primary care community service. Thank you for listening.